All right, let's get straight into it. We finally have all the info for the hardware on the Switch 2. So we're going to talk about that and what that actually means. We're going to give you a battery life talk. Well, we actually know how much battery life is on the Switch 2. And a fun fact, I was actually very, very close to being correct. It is a 19.3 watt hour battery. I had guessed that it was 22, 22 watt hour months ago just by looking at an empty well on the leaked casing of the device. So I'm going to pat myself on the back for getting that right just by eyeballing that up. Uh, pricing, we're looking at $450 for the base model. This doesn't come without, uh, this comes without a game. They do have a pack-in version, a bundle with Mario Kart World. That's $500. That's the digital-only version of Mario Kart World. doesn't come with the, the retail physical copy. Additionally, pre-orders start next week, April 9th. That news comes to us initially through Business Wire because we didn't get that through the Direct at all. So uh, if you're interested in pre-ordering, that starts next week, April 9th. And those are the prices, which is to be expected, I think, because a lot of people were already talking about 450 and 500 for a uh, Mario Kart 9 pack-in. So that lines up all as it was. So let's just jump straight into it. First, I want to talk about the battery size. So the battery is... They reference the battery capacity to be 5,220 milliamp hour. So with a single cell 3.7 volt, that is 19.3 watt hour. Now, what that means is if we go down a little bit further, it says battery life, approximately two hours to 6.5 hours of battery life. What that means is that everything that we had actually speculated about like months ago on Twitter, but just talking with people, all lined up to be absolutely correct. So everything I said on what battery life was going to be all lined up when we were discussing this. So when we take a look at the the type of SOC that is on the Switch 2, when you are running heavier 3D games and running in a handheld state, there is a minimum amount of power that this thing is going to take to realistically get things done. And with talking with people, the TDP on the device is likely going to be around uh, 7 to 8 8 watts and with everything else the the RAM, the display, Wi-Fi, SSD, all that other stuff is another 1 to 2 watts. So we're effectively looking at 9 to 10 watts when playing 3D types of games. What that means is with a 19.3 watt hour battery, you're looking at approximately two hours of battery life, a little bit less. So that is a worst case scenario. Now, Nintendo says it goes up to 6.5 hours of battery life. This is going to be for less demanding games, games that are not going to be engaging that GPU all that much. So it's going to be more 2D based games. So that will be give you more battery life in those types of games. So worst case battery life is two hours, which is worse than the original Switch when it came out. But all of these things kind of line up to what we thought it would be. So for the battery part, that's pretty much understood. Another thing worth talking about is I think Nintendo made the right decision by going and exclusively using microSD Express cards. microSD Express cards are an open standard. It's not like Nintendo is making a proprietary card here. These have been out for quite a while, and they do have lots of benefits. And if Nintendo allowed both of them to be used, most people are going to be buying the cheaper cards that are slower. So you really are going to need, especially if you want to make use of like direct storage and other things or, you know, straight from the card to the GPU without having the CPU interact with it, you really need this to exist. So I think in my mind, the Nintendo really did make the right call here by using micro uh, SD Express. It's an open standard. It's not proprietary and it is the right call. I know a lot of people are going to be upset about this because it, they are more expensive but it is the right call. So, um, you know, let me know in the comments section what you feel about that. Next up we could talk about is the display itself. And they didn't mention it in the direct, which is, you know, odd. We do know it is effectively an 8 inch 16 by 9 1080p display. It does have HDR10 support and it does have VRR up to 120 hertz. Knowing that it is a VRR panel, this means that it is actually a EDP panel. So we might have an avenue for other types of PC handheld game makers to leverage the screen if they can get, you know, other supply stock of this. Having a 7.9 inch 1080p uh, VRR panel with HR10 support is interesting. So there's a lot that we have to unpack there because I, up to 120 hertz is good and being having variable refresh rate for that is excellent because we already saw that metroid prime 4 in a handout state in its quality mode and handheld supports 1080p at 60 or it has a performance mode setting of 720p at 120 fps now knowing this vrr means that it's going to fluctuate some depending on whatever is happening in the game scene but that's really awesome to have that in a switch handout so i'm glad that we have vrr support there really glad to see that what's interesting is that this lcd panel is HDR. 
Now, how is that going to look? That remains to be seen. So just to give you an idea, OLED is technically a much better solution for using HDR because they are self-emissive pixels, meaning that you can emit light per pixel. So if you have lots of dark scenes, you're spending less power and bright scenes, you're spending more power just on where it's needed. For LCD, you don't have that. LCD is not a self-emissive technology. It requires a backlight to work. So if you require a backlight, if you just had a clean backlight to do HDR, you'd actually have to boost power on that backlight to then get that increased brightness. I don't think they're going that way because I've looked at other panels like that and they can go up to 15 watts on the panel alone. Likely is that they are using edge lit uh, HDR, which is kind of gross because then you're gonna have like these columns of HDR. So you're gonna have these blooms that happen. That is pretty gross. I don't think that's gonna happen. Then you have like differences of mini LED or full array local dimming, where you're going to have zones of backlights, zones of LED backlights that will illuminate. There are still going to be blooming that happens here. So it really remains to be seen how many zones there are. That is something we still don't yet know. So uh, it remains to be seen how good that actually looks in practice. And I'm not of the belief that that's going to be all that great for HDR. It's probably going to be better off just doing SDR all the time with just a uniform level of, of backlight going through. It remains to be seen. It'll be interesting to, to, to take a look at, but obviously because we already know that it gets two hours of battery life and we're at like a 10 watt total system power and given the power of the system as well, we already know that we're still in this one to two watt area that, that the external components are gonna be using. So we know that this screen doesn't use that much power. Now does, a bat battery life should have the approximate if HDR went further, we should have less battery life. So are they including this? Are they not? Who knows? We have to take a look at that when we have a little bit more information, but it's still pretty interesting to see. We also saw that uh, very quickly, it does have mouse support and they already have it in the game for Metro Prime 4 Beyond is that it, uh, this is something that we've talked about previously. I actually really like this idea. Now, gyro is also a very good input for FPS types of games or precision input, but a mouse is very intuitive. So being able to use mouse and a controller, I'm actually a fan of this. I like this. Hopefully we'll see how this actually works in practice. I know that Bill from Nerdness said that it was kind of uncomfortable. I, I will wait to, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe there's accessories that you can get for the Joy-Con to make it, you know, a little bit more comfortable and ergonomic to use as, as a mouse. Another thing worth mentioning is that a Nintendo is clearly using NVIDIA's tech in two different ways. They showed it off once by the noise canceling tech with just a little microphone that's on the top and having it docked far away that they are confident that it will cancel all noise around it by just speaking. And NVIDIA's noise cancellation technology is actually really good. So likely this is using NVIDIA's own tech for noise canceling with the mic pickup over there. Additionally, when we saw that the camera has the auto green screen effect, I would wager that that is using NVIDIA's tech for that as well. So it has those components inside the system and can make use of it. So they're using it. So they didn't really say this was NVIDIA stuff, but it, this is definitely NVIDIA stuff that's running. So it's cool that they're using it. The camera part of this, probably not going to get a whole bunch of use. The mic pickup thing will get use. And I think you're going to be surprised how good that actually works if you've never used NVIDIA's uh, noise canceling before, because it's, it's really sensational. And the last bit we're going to talk about is the dock. Obviously, the dock does support 4K output and HDR if your TV supports it. So even in Metroid Prime 4, it says that it would run the game at 4K 60 in its quality mode. Naturally, I believe that even when we start ramping up the power in this, when we're going from like seven to eight watt or nine watt on the system, that it's going to be able to go up to 15, 20 watt easy. Going up to 15 to 20 watt isn't a whole bunch for a, a mobile chipset, a, a SOC APU, but you do want to have some assistive uh, cooling. So they did include a fan in the dock itself. So really cool to see that that was there. And another thing that we had speculated uh, speculated on that there would be a fan in the dock and that looks like it is the case as well. So I don't think you're going to hear the fan. It's just to assist the cooling on the device itself. But I think overall, what is presented by Nintendo uh, is really good initially. And what we're seeing is, is excellent. So uh, I do really like the micro SD card express rule that they've made. I know a lot of people are going to feel that it is contentious, but I think it overall is the right choice, especially when we talk about types of things for like, you know, if, if you could put a, a spinner in a PS5, that would make things worse, right? So by only having NVMe, we understand that that's okay. Using micro SD card express cards is the right choice here.
and everything else we're looking at. I'm just really happy with myself that I was able to eyeball the size of the battery from leaks, leaks that we saw of the shell a long time ago, and that looks like it's all correct. So that is pretty much it. Thank you very much to my YouTube channel members as well as my Patreon members. Your support really means the world to me, guys. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.